Well, let's stay on the subject of storage technology for a moment. In order to learn more about it from an expert, joining us in the studio now is Jochen Bart. He's a physicist and a researcher at the Fraunhofer Institute for Wind Energy and Energy System Technology in Kassel. Very nice to have you with us here on the show today. All right, well, power to gas seems like a very complicated method. Would you say that this is really a viable option for energy storage in the future? Well, as we have seen uh, before, the, the principle of electrolysis is more than 100 years old. We have modern technology and it's used a lot in industry, so we produce hydrogen at, at large quantities already. So it's not that terribly complicated. And uh, the idea is now to use that technology for energy storage in the future. Okay, what are some of the disadvantages, though, of getting there? Well, certainly energy storage comes with cost, so we will need to, to, uh, to find ways how to make it cheaper. Uh, and secondly, we, we need technical systems to realize storage at a large scale. And the idea here is to use the existing gas infrastructure for that. Okay. Now, the tanks that would be used for the storage, um, how would they be handled? I mean, we already see wind turbines littering landscapes. Um, then you would add these tanks to that as well? Well, in the case of Germany, we have a huge natural gas supply infrastructure with a lot of storage capacity already in it, and that's all subsurface technology, so it's pipelines in the ground, and we can use those for energy storage of chemical energy carriers in the future. Okay, so this would, these tanks would then be stored underground. Yes. We wouldn't have to see them. They, they wouldn't be eyesores. They're already there. Yeah. They're already there. All right, well, um, technology, the technology with power to gas still needs to be improved, and your work at the Fraunhofer Institute is focusing on that. Tell us a little, about, a little bit more about what you're doing. Yeah, as we've seen, the, the, the um, feeding hydrogen into a natural gas network has technical limitations. Only a few percent of, of hydrogen is accepted in the, in the gas network, and we're trying to lift that that uh, uh, limitation by uh, mixing the hydrogen with uh, carbon dioxide and uh, putting it through a reactor and then we will have um, uh, pure methane as, a, as an output and uh, we can feed pure methane into the gas network without limitations. Okay, and how long would the storage last? Well, uh, the storage system is so big that we can store energy for a month if we wanted to. A month? Uh, several months. Oh, yeah. several months. Yeah. Yeah. I see. Okay. So, having said that, how far off is this dream of power to gas to becoming a reality? Well, the technology is almost there. We mm -hmm. still need to bring down the cost and in increase the reliability, but in principle we could start tomorrow. However, the expansion or the further deployment of uh, renewable energies will, will uh, only require f uh, storage at a large scale in the, in the near future. In the next maybe five to ten years, we will probably start uh, introducing those to the market. Okay, and tell us a little bit about some of the other innovative approaches to um, storing renewable energies. Well, we are looking into what we call innovative pump storage solutions uh, that avoid the, the use of huge lakes, storage lakes and ponds that we need for conventional pump hydro storage. Uh, that would be, again, a subsurface technology. Uh, then new battery technologies like lithium-ion and others are under development for large stationary applications. Uh, and there's, there's other technologies also in the pipeline. Okay, well, sounds like a promising future for renewable energy. Jochen Bart, thank you very much for talking to us today. Thank you.